Today, we are going to build good habits, break bad habits, and go through my ultra curated list of practical shortcuts that will send your workflow into overdrive. I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com, and this is my top 25 shortcuts you absolutely should be using in Photoshop. If you like what you see, go ahead and show us with a like, and if you're new here, why not subscribe? We put out five new videos every week, all focused on a advanced level photo manipulation. Now, let's talk shortcuts. So we're only going to be covering the default Photoshop shortcuts, but I'll be doing a whole video dedicated to custom hotkeys along with a guide on express key remotes and keypads. So make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss that. It is so, so, so hard to start using shortcuts after the fact, after you've already built up that muscle memory for how you do things. It's never too late to start though, and all of these 25 shortcuts are ones I use almost every composite now. Quick heads up, I will be using the PC shortcuts, uh, however the Mac equivalents will appear at the bottom of the screen as well. Let's start with using F to switch between screen modes. Pressing F will cycle you through Photoshop's three different screen modes. Standard, where you can control Photoshop's window size and whatnot. Then full screen with the menu bar, my most used. And finally, just straight up full screen, which can be nice for looking at your work with zero distraction. A better option to full screen mode, in my opinion though, is just hitting tab, which will collapse all menus and panels. Use Ctrl S to save. Get into the habit of hitting Ctrl S often. I do it without even thinking. In fact, I usually hit it two or three times because Photoshop and I have developed some real trust issues over the years. Really work in Ctrl S into that muscle memory I mentioned earlier. Uh, your future self will thank you. Next up, hold space to pan. Press and hold the space bar, click and drag. Once you're done dragging and you let go of the spacebar, your tool will switch back to whatever tool you were using before. And depending on your Photoshop settings, you can drag and flip your canvas around, both fun and efficient. Hit Ctrl R to show rulers, and then hit Ctrl R to hide them again instantly. Bringing us to our next kind of shortcut, pull and drag on rulers to create guides. The horizontal ruler creates a horizontal guide and the vertical ruler creates a vertical guide. Uh, pretty easy to remember. But you can always hit alt to turn whatever guide you have into its opposite counterpart. This is great for quickly marking the center of the canvas. Hit R and drag your mouse to rotate your screen. This makes painting and masking about a hundred times easier. It's also great for when you're doing large zoomed in selections with the pen tool. Just like with the pan tool, once you let go of R, your tool will revert back to whatever tool you were using last. Uh, much better than going back and forth from tool to tool. Control C to copy and Control V to paste. This is just a universal shortcut you should be using everywhere. Uh, there is actually a more effective way to do this in Photoshop specifically, but Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste are pretty much, like I said, universal from web browsers to other photo editing programs, so it deserves a spot on the list for sure. Select a layer, hold shift, and click on a second layer to select all of the layers in between. Hit Ctrl G and you have an instant group, or you can just hit Ctrl G to group one layer. I know grouping and naming and organizing layers are the most boring mundane tasks that feel like such a workflow killer, but the feeling of inconvenience of grouping your layers now is far better than the absolute slog of despair you'll feel later as you go through each layer one by one trying to find that one random layer with that one random detail. Find two layers, hold alt, and hover your mouse over the line that separates the two layers. Once your mouse turns into a box with a down pointed arrow, you can click and you've just created a clipping mask. The clip layer is now confined to the pixel footprint of the layer it is clipped into. Let me know down in the comments if you want a whole video covering clipping masks, 
or you can learn how to create super simple reflections using clipping masks in my broken black mirror tutorial one of the first tutorials i ever made for the channel alt drag to copy a layer or layer mask click a layer hold alt and drag either up or down to create a copy of the layer or layers you have selected and you can do the same movement on layer masks, uh, copying them onto different layers and groups by holding Alt, clicking, dragging, and dropping. When the brush tool is active, hold Alt to temporarily switch to the color picker. Let go of Alt to switch back to the brush tool. Another must for any kind of digital painting. Press B for the brush tool and E for the eraser brush. Now, I do use a tablet pen with a built-in eraser, but I still prefer manually switching from brush to eraser using shortcuts. It's quicker, there's no jittering back and forth as it tries to decide if the butt of the pen is close enough to activate the eraser tool. I can control the eraser brush settings easier. There's a whole list. And of course, if you don't use a tablet, then lucky you. You aren't missing out on much in that regard. Pressing B and E to switch between the two tools works amazingly. Hit X to swap between the foreground and background color. We are getting deep into all of the brush shortcuts as the brush tool, I think, requires the most need for an efficient workflow. You don't want to stop and go, stop and go. Swapping between not only your main two colors while painting details and the like, but also for swapping between black and white while masking. That's a biggie. I know not everyone paints, but everyone should be using layer masks. Speaking of, press D to reset the default background and foreground colors back to black and white. I have masked using what I thought was a flat black, but actually ended up being a very, very, very dark gray color. So learn from my mistakes, just press D before masking. Use the square bracket keys to control your brush size, the left bracket to shrink and the right bracket to enlarge. If your brush size is 1 through 9 pixels, your brush will move up and down in 1 pixel increments. If it's 10 to 50 pixels, it will move in increments of 5. I mention this because this is still my ideal way of controlling my brush size when I'm working with a smaller brush, as I can go up and down brush sizes accurately without having to worry about overshooting or undershooting. However, if you're working with a larger brush, you may be better off using this. Hold Alt, right click, and then drag the mouse either left or right to increase and shrink the brush size. This is a much more dynamic and quicker way to adjust the brush size and is ideal for when you don't need precision. You just need to go from a generally small or medium brush to a generally large or very large brush. Again, Alt, right click, drag left or right. Now you can hold Alt, right click, and then drag the mouse either up or down to increase and decrease the brush softness. Much, much, much more efficient than going back and forth into the brush settings just to change the softness manually. Again, Alt, right click, drag up and down to adjust brush softness. Turn Caps Lock on to activate the Precision Brush Head. The Precision Brush Head is great for when you are using a very textured or weirdly shaped brush and you're having a hard time painting exactly where you want to paint, or maybe even seeing where you want to paint. I don't use it too often, but it's incredibly handy when I do find myself needing it. Hold Control and click a layer to create an exact selection of everything on that layer. This includes soft edges, small details, it's an exact selection. It's probably one of my favorite shortcuts, you'll catch me doing it all the time. Apply a selection shape as a mask. If you have a selection, choose either a pre-existing layer or create yourself a new one and then add a layer mask. The mask will autofill to the selection, something else you will see me do all the time. Control Enter after closing a path to make a selection. After completing a pen tool selection, press Control and Enter to instantly turn that path into a selection. Otherwise, you have to right click Make Selection. Shift click to disable a mask. Select a layer's layer mask. Hold shift and then click to hide that layer mask. 
This will hide the layer mask, but not delete the layer mask, which is great for double checking what you are or aren't masking out. Control I to invert masks and selections. Create a mask or selection and then hit Control I to invert them. I use this all the time, especially when I want to fill a new mask with black, which I will do when I want to pinpoint textures or adjustment layers. You can see this used as the main tool in both my how to create a burning effect video and my how to create a digital face paint effect video. Use Control J to duplicate your active layer or the selected contents of that layer. Yes, we have yet another way to copy a layer. However, instead of two shortcuts, Control C and Control V, it's mixed down to just one, just Control J. This will either duplicate a whole layer, creating the copy instantly and placing it above the original, or copy the contents of a selection onto a new layer, once again placing it above the original. Finally, hit Control D to deselect. This will simply clear any selections and is another one of those functions I had a weird workaround that I still have to stop myself from doing. But once you stop yourself a few times, the good habit will replace the bad habit and it will all become second nature. And that will round off our list of the 25 or so, I think there was an extra one or two thrown in, shortcuts you absolutely should be using in Photoshop. Especially if you're just starting out, just trust me. Now, if you're wondering why I never mentioned things like Control Z to undo, it's because A, you probably already know and use Control Z all the time, and two, both undo and redo are two of my most used keys on my Express Key remote, along with flip canvas, save, even a couple of my most used actions, uh, because yes, you can set actions to shortcuts. Custom shortcuts and express key remotes and keypads are a whole video unto themselves, however, and it will be coming very, very soon. As for our default shortcuts, I think that about does it. So like if you like, subscribe if you really like, and let me know what you'd like to see next. I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com. See you next time.